four distinct seasons which all have positives and negatives, except for fall, which is pretty much guaranteed to be amazing with a beautiful fall foliage and crisp air without too much pollution. But depending on your style of travel, it might not be the best time for you. I assume everyone coming to Korea will probably come to Seoul at least once. So in this video I'll give you some options of what to do near Seoul, as well as other places around the country that are great to see for a few days depending on the season. We're also starting a playlist just for our travel guides here, and this is the first video in the series. We'll keep updating it over time, so keep checking back and let us know in the comments if there are any topics you want us to cover. Let's get started. We'll begin with fall, because it's the easiest season to recommend. The start of fall at the end of September and early October will still be quite warm, just like summer in a lot of places, so you can probably still squeeze in some visits to the beach during the hotter days until about mid-October. It's also quite sunny, and doesn't rain that much during this time, but it won't be unbearably hot like July and August are here. Then when you get to October, it's the most comfortable weather to walk around outside and explore, with average highs of 20 degrees Celsius and lows at nighttime of about 9 degrees. The air is typically the cleanest all year round, with the least amount of pollution, and the fall foliage is stunning in Korea, so you can see some really beautiful landscapes, especially in the mountains if you're into hiking. If you're in Seoul, I recommend going up Namsan Mountain in the middle of the city. There's a short hike that takes about 30 to 40 minutes to get to the top. You can also take a cable car to the top if you want. And when you get there, you get 360 degree views of the whole city. And you can see really far, so it's important to choose a clear day without much pollution. I'd recommend trying to be there when the sun sets, as you can watch the sunset and then watch it slowly become nighttime and take in the amazing views. For trips out of Seoul, I have a few options. From mid to late October, it's the perfect time to go hiking and check out Korea's beautiful mountains and the leaves changing colors. Here is the fall foliage forecast for a lot of Korea's most famous mountains from last year. I strongly recommend Soraksan near Sokcho, which has a massive Buddha statue, a beautiful temple called Shinunsa, and some amazing hiking trails as well. I recommend hiking up Usanbawi which takes about 3-4 to four hours round trip and gives you some breathtaking views of the beautiful rock formations found all over Soraksan. You should also go up the cable car to see Gwanggumsung Fortress, which has some really nice views on the cliffs on a clear day. If you watch this channel for a while, you might know another activity that I'm about to recommend. Long distance cycling. Korea has some amazing cycling infrastructure all over the country, and fall time is a perfect time to cycle, as it's not too hot outside and the scenery is beautiful. The Four Rivers Trail from Seoul to Busan is the most popular bike trail by far. At 633 kilometers of cyclist only roads almost the whole way, with lots of cities along the way too. But I also want to recommend the Somjingang bike trail for those who want a shorter route at 149 kilometers, which in my opinion is the most beautiful bike trail in Korea. A hidden gem candidate would be to travel to Hapcheonggung during this time and check out Hwangmaesan's Silver Grass Festival. This is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to, and we made a video you can check out if you want to see something really special that most travelers don't get a chance to see. November and December are the big transitionary periods between fall and winter. It starts to get a lot colder with highs between 4 and 12 degrees Celsius and lows of minus 4 to 2 degrees. It's still nice enough weather to walk around, just make sure to pack a warm winter jacket and some layers just in case. Now let's talk about winter. Despite Seoul being almost the same latitude as San Francisco, it gets a lot colder here. In January and February, you're looking at highs between 2 and 5 degrees Celsius and lows of minus 7 to minus 4 degrees, but it can get as cold as minus 15 on some rare occasions too. There isn't much snow overall and it starts to get more polluted during this time. Honestly, I don't strongly recommend coming to Korea in the winter, but you might not have the flexibility to come during another season, so here's what to do in that case. 
If you're in Seoul, remember to check out the Seoul Lantern Festival from late December until late January at Gwangamun Square, just south of Gyeongbokgung Palace. You can see lanterns of various aspects of Korean culture and some modern themed lanterns as well. There are also outdoor ice rinks at City Hall, the Grand Hyatt Hotel, Yoido, and Chamshil Olympic Park all open in the winter, perfect for couples or families. For trips in the winter, Korea has its fair share of ski resorts, with my top three being Yongpyeong, Muju, and Haiwan in that order. Yongpyeong has the most slope variety, the best quality terrain park, and best village. Muju is very similar to Yongpyeong, but it lacks a little bit in advanced slopes in comparison. But it has the most Korean charm to it, so if I was visiting Korea I'd choose Muju over Yongpyeong to be honest. And then Haiwan is the most modern with the best snow, but it lacks a bit in variety. But please don't travel to Korea only to ski or snowboard. It doesn't snow enough here, so all the snow is man-made, and the slopes are really narrow and crowded. However, it's not that expensive to ski here, with combined lift tickets and rentals being under 80,000 Korean won, or about $60 USD generally. And it's still worth going if you end up in Korea at this time, as there's normally a lot of fun stuff to do at the villages with some amazing food as well. Another really fun winter activity is right on Jeju Island, a small island off the southwestern coast of Korea. There's a mountain called Hallasan right in the middle of it, and hiking it in the winter is absolutely stunning if it snows and you get some clear weather. Keep in mind that you have to reserve online if you want to hike up. I recommend the Kwanamsa course, which is 8.7 kilometers to the top and should take you about 8 to 10 hours round trip, so I only really recommend it for those who are fairly active. And now we have late winter or early March. It starts to get warmer with average highs of 10 degrees Celsius and lows of 0 degrees, but it's still quite polluted just like the winter, and things are still pretty grey overall, as the flowers don't really start to bloom until the end of March or early April. Only come during March if you can find some amazing deals and you don't care about outdoor activities as much. However, it's still suitable for cycling and hiking, just the scenery won't be as beautiful overall. When it comes to spring, Korea is beautiful, and it's on par with fall as one of the best times to travel to Korea, but you'll have less clear days overall as it's still a little bit more polluted to be honest. The end of March and start of April is cherry blossom season, which is incredibly beautiful if you've never seen it before. Here's the forecast for 2023 just to give you an idea of when and where to go. I'd recommend traveling to Chine, which is close to Busan, and has its own cherry blossom festival at the end of March to early April. It's arguably the most famous festival in Korea, and it'll be packed, but it's still really fun to see everyone celebrate the beautiful blossoms together. If you're in Seoul, Yoido, the island in western Seoul, also has a cherry blossom festival in early April. It's not quite as big as the Chine festival, but still worth checking out if you're around and don't want to make the trek down there. Also remember to take a look at some of the parks like Seoul Forest or Chamshil Olympic Park. These are my two favorite parks in the city and they're really beautiful to look at. In May, you get Buddha's birthday and a lot of the Buddhist temples are really beautiful at this time. I recommend going to Heidong Yonggungsa near Busan and Bulguksa near Gyeongju. If you're in Seoul, definitely check out Chogyesa, the chief temple of the Chogye order. June is the month that we'll call bearable summer, so if you want to come on a nice summer vacation and you aren't an absolute psychopath who loves hot humid weather, come during June. In Seoul, I'd recommend going to one of the Han River parks in either Yoido, Pampo, or Duksong. All three are amazing spots to relax next to the Han River, enjoy the beautiful city view, and have a picnic. Chicken and beer, or chimek, is the most common food eaten next to the Han River. Also, make sure to stay until nighttime, as Seoul is its most beautiful during the night hours. For a nice trip in June, I'd recommend going to Busan, Korea's second largest city with two of its most famous beaches. Gwangalli is the famous beach with the massive bridge view that's super beautiful at night. There are also tons of restaurants, cafes, and nightlife nearby. Then over at Haeundae, Korea's most famous beach, 
you get the best sand and water, but it gets insanely crowded. So I'd recommend going a bit north to Songjung Beach if you want a less crowded beach to swim at. However, it's still worth going to Haeunde. It's a vibe that you'll never forget and is truly unique to Busan. Now let's talk about summertime. Just avoid coming here during the summer, unless you're really used to extremely hot and humid weather. July and August have average highs of about 28 to 29 degrees Celsius, but it easily reaches the mid 30s, with lows of 22 degrees at night. The rainy season is also in the summer, so it can rain for multiple days at a time, and sometimes weeks. As a Canadian not made for this weather, I sweat every time I step foot outside my house in the summer, even at nighttime. If you're in Seoul, during the day it's probably best to check out one of the big malls such as Lotte World Mall in Chamsha, which has its own theme park inside called Lotte World. You can also check out Coex Mall near Gangnam, which has its own aquarium, and the Hyundai department store in Yoido, which is probably the most trendy, but honestly I'm the worst person to give recommendations about that. But the good thing is, you can easily spend a whole day at either of these malls if you enjoy this type of thing. If you're looking for somewhere to go during the summer, it's a good time to check out Jeju. You can fly round trip from Seoul for less than $100, and Korea's best beaches are found here. I'd recommend going to Kimyeong Beach if you want a really relaxed local Jeju atmosphere. Hamdok Beach if you're looking for a beach with tons of restaurants and things to do, kind of more touristy. And then Hyopje or Kumning Beach for something in between. You can see the sunset at any of the three beaches but it's especially beautiful at Hyopje or Kumnin, as they're a little bit closer to the west coast. Either way, you can't go wrong in Jeju, as it's beautiful all over the island. We also made a guide similar to this about traveling to Jeju on a budget, so check it out from the pop-up link above for some more details. That should give you a general overview of what to expect during each season. We hope it helped you plan your trip to Korea, and there are so many things that couldn't make it into this video, as it's just a general overview. So please feel free to ask down in the comments below if you have further questions. And if you like the video, please consider subscribing and giving us a like. And join our Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. Hope everyone is doing well, and we'll see you soon.